Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Welcome to yet another edition of Faith Ministries where we walk by faith and not by sight. The date today is uh, Monday, February 1st, 2016, and it's about 3.38 a.m. in the morning. Um, I'm an early bird, so this is no big thing, really. Um, I do work best early in the morning, so I figured I'd make a video today. And the subject of today's um, word is when God seems far away. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you felt that God was far away, that somehow you couldn't really feel him <clears throat> as much as you did before. Um, you might be going through, you know, hard times and, you know, there seems to be no end to your afflictions. There seems to be no end to the pain and to whatever it is that you're going through. And you feel so alone, even when you're among a group of people, you still feel alone and desolate and you have this feeling of separation I, I definitely have been in one of those situations where I felt that you know I was observing the world go on you know but I, I felt kind of separate from the world it's kind of separated from life as it was happening um, so I've definitely have had moments in my own life where I that have been characterized by excruciating pain and you know, with lots of things happening at the exact same time and feeling overwhelmed. Um, but I want to encourage you that if you're going through a situation like that right now, if you're in a situation where you feel that you have been waiting for a very long time for the Lord to come through for you, or that you've been waiting for a very long time for all of your afflictions to come to an end and it just seems like things keep getting from bad to worse i actually want to offer you a word of encouragement you know because i've definitely been there many times in my life but the one thing i think that kept me holding on was knowing that i was going through it when you're going through something it's dynamic it's not just static so there's always going to be an end to whatever it is that you're going through. And it's especially in these times when you feel like that, that you should not give up, that you should continue to hold on and hold steadfast and trust that the Lord is going to come through for you. The Bible is very, uh, it's full of people who've been through a lot of things. I mean, I think the most that people remember is Job, right? He went through so much, but there are other characters in the Bible that really went through to hell and back, figuratively speaking, you know, but they held on and they never once wavered in their faith in God and eventually God delivered them. So I want you to hold steadfast, no matter how terrible a situation might be, you know, the late Pastor David Wilkerson used to say that the hardest part of the battle is the last half hour. So you really might be at your last half hour literally in battle and this is not the time to give up. This is the time to continue to hold on and to continue to have faith in God because God is always going to come through for his children. I'm getting a little bit emotional because, you know, when I think about all the things that God has done for me, I know without a shadow of a doubt that God can reach out to you wherever it is that you are and he can pull you out and he can sustain you. And, you know, the word of the Lord says, you know, Jesus is close. He, he sticks closer than a brother, you know, so don't give up. Always. You know, I just want you to know a couple of things anyway. Um, the first is that whatever it is you're going through, God is sovereign. He knows what's going on. He's not blind to the things that are happening to you. You know, he sees you. The word of the Lord says in Psalms 121.4, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. So God is not sleeping. He knows what's happening to you and he sees you, he sees your heart and he actually cares about you. The word of the Lord says in Psalms 56, 8, 
that God actually bottles our tears. That's how much he cares about us. So when you cry and, you know, these hot tears fall down your cheeks and you're left feeling hopeless and helpless and questioning the meaning of life itself and <clears throat> feeling like there is no help absolutely out there for you, you know, I want to let you know that if you put your trust and if you put your faith in God, then he will deliver you out of all of your afflictions and that whatever this situation is that you're going through there's always a will and there's always a purpose for it always remember that god wants to lift you up and not to tear you down in matthew 12 20 the word says that of jesus that a bruised reed shall he not break so jesus and god they want to lift us up and not tear us down so if you keep your trust in him no matter what happens to you you know your situation is not going to break you because greater is he that is in you than the one that is in the world and i want to let you know that all things work well and together for good so even that situation that you're going through right now god will use that situation to turn it around for good just like he used the situation with joseph when joseph was you know joseph's brother sold him into slavery and then his joseph once he got to egypt he spent a lot of he spent about a decade or so in jail in prison you know but god used those painful situations to turn things around and to use one man to save israel so I want to let you know that God's hand is in everything. Even when it doesn't seem apparent, the hand of the Lord is in everything. And I'm actually very sure about this because a year ago this time, you know, uh, my mother had total knee replacement surgery here in the United States. And it was really just me and my mother. You know, and I remember feeling extremely overwhelmed the day she had surgery. That was January 26th, 2015. I remember that night after surgery feeling relieved that, you know, finally she was going to be fine. But the journey ahead of us seemed totally overwhelming because I still had to go to my job and do my job. But I also had to be my mother's nurse 24-7 and take her to all her appointments help her out with physical therapy and do all of these things not to mention the astronomical medical bill because she was uninsured because she's not you know she doesn't live in the united states this was a medical vacation and so the astronomical medical bills that you know i had to take care of i just was feeling extremely overwhelmed and i remember sitting lying in the extra bed in the hospital because she had a private wing and I remember just lying there and feeling overwhelmed and feeling like I don't know how I'm going to handle everything Lord I feel so overwhelmed you know and I just said I remember lying there and saying God I don't know how I'm going to do this but I know that you're going to sustain me Lord I'm asking you to sustain me and it's been a year now and God has truly been faithful. He has sustained me. And not only has he sustained me, but he has blessed me, you know, so much. And I am truly thankful for the blessings that the Lord has given me because for the first time in my life since I have lived in the United States, and it's been over 10 years now, I can assure you of that. For the first time in my life, I'm feeling a sense of community with people the Lord has literally surrounded me with other Christians and it's the most amazing feeling I mean I've been going to church for years but never really felt the sense of community but the people that I am meeting who are Christians and loving kind people want the people that I met in church they've just been people I've met in my day-to-day -day life you know and so I just I'm thankful to God for that because now I feel that I have a sense of community now I feel that I have that I'm connected into something you know with other people who love Jesus and who love God and I know that if I need someone to pray with 
then you know I have this network of people and so I'm thankful to God for for that and for his other blessings and so I tell you this story as a testimony but also to let you know that you know God is nearest to us if especially when we are going through the worst of the worst and we may not see it in that moment because sometimes our grief sometimes our anxiety sometimes our fears overshadow everything else around us and we're not fully able to see it blinds us to seeing you know what's happening around us but only later shall we realize that truly the hand of God was in everything even in that situation and for me I know that the hand of the Lord has been upon me there's never been a doubt about that even when I've been going through things even when I felt overwhelmed even when I felt alone I've known that I'm not really truly alone because God is with me and so when you find yourself in such situations I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord in first Samuel chapter 30 verses 4 to 6 we see that King David actually came back from war with his men and when they came to the, the, the town of uh, I think it's Ziklag I don't quite remember you know how to pronounce it but when he got to the town he found that the Amalekites had actually burnt down the town and taken all the women and children captive including his two wives Abigail and I don't remember the other woman you know and so the people who were victorious now were sad and they were mourning and they were grieving for their families and then they turned against David and they were angry with David and they wanted to stone Dave, King David so David was distressed, but even in his distress, the word of the Lord tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verses 46, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. You know, so whenever you find yourself in, when you go through these situations that seem to be the deserts of our lives or the valleys of our lives, I want to remind you that, you know, you can encourage yourself in the Lord. And next, after encouraging himself in the Lord, he actually inquired after God and said Lord should I go after these Amalekites and God said go you know you will recover everything so I feel that like David and the way he interacted with God really gives us a good blueprint for how we ourselves can deal with with some of these situations because as Christians we are not necessarily exempt from feeling pain like the rest of the world we will feel pain we will feel loss and Pain and loss are part of the human existence. We can't avoid that, you know, but we can. What sets, what sets us apart is that while the heathen turn to other things in the physical to relieve the pain, we have an almighty God who is an ever-present help in times of trouble for us that we can go to him as our father and speak to him. And we can rely upon him and have faith that he's going to deliver us that he's going to see us through this and that he's going to turn the situation around for good so encourage yourself in the Lord and if you're a new Christian and you know you don't really know how to encourage yourself in the Lord it's I would encourage you to seek out other Christians that you can speak with that that can pray for you that can support you but importantly encourage yourself in the Lord when you read the word of the Lord and I have a couple of Bible verses that I'd like to share with you just to give you a platform that you can use to begin to encourage yourself and then as you read the word of the Lord for yourself you can find other verses that you could use to strengthen your faith even in these times of um, trials and tribulations so second chronicles seven fourteen says that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land so the lord promises us that if we turn to him humble ourselves and turn to him he'll forgive us and he will heal us spiritually heal us you know second chronicles 69 the lord says it says the word says that 
For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. So we should, when we cry out to the Lord, we should just ask the Lord to show himself strong in our behalf because he's always looking upon the earth. He's always, his eyes are roaming to and fro to find someone. So he's actually looking for us. He's actually looking for people that he can show himself strong on their behalf. So when you cry out to the Lord, remember this Bible verse and speak it and remind God, you know, of what his word says and what he has promised us and ask him to show himself strong on your behalf, whatever the situation is. Now, I'm actually reading Psalms, the book of Psalms right now. I'm almost done with the book of Psalms. And um, Psalms 34 is actually a really good uh, psalm that you should read. And there's so many promises in that specific psalm that the Lord gives us. Right. So in chapters, in verse 7, Psalms 34 says that the angel of the Lord encompasseth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And we're told in verse 9 that there is no want in those that fear the Lord. And in verse 15, it says that the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. So the eyes of the Lord are upon us. He that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. So God sees us. He sees our pain and we can take that pain to Jesus and ask him to relieve us of that pain. I remember when I was you know, in that hospital at 2 a.m. in the, that night when we spent the hospital with my mom, I said, Lord, I surrender to you completely, you know, and I know you're going to sustain me. And in that moment when I surrendered everything and lay my body literally at his feet, in that moment, I felt this peace, like literally clothe me and, and cover me. I felt that peace, that peace that the Bible says surpasses all understanding. I experienced that. And not only that, I also experienced a strength that came from inside of me. It was a very quiet resolve and strength. And that strength never really left me. So in the coming weeks and months when, you know, my mom was going through rehab um, for her surgery, no matter what was happening around me, I had the strength to go on. But I could only, that strength came from God. And it, it wasn't until I had laid everything down completely at his feet and said, Lord, I have reached the end of my rope here, that he stepped in and he took over. So we kind of got to get to that point in our lives where we stop trying to make things happen too much. We, we just have to surrender everything to God. Because when we say, Lord, Father, just take control of my life right now and of this specific situation, I'm giving it to you. Then God steps in and he does what he needs to do. He gives us the grace to go through stuff. He gives us the peace that we need and he gives us the strength that we need to go through whatever it is. So I want to encourage you brothers and sisters, you know that it's not the end of the world and there is nothing too heavy that the Lord can't redeem us from. There is nothing too difficult that he can't show himself in our behalf for. So I want to leave you with that and give you that encouragement and tell you that I am here for you and if you would like someone to pray with feel free to send me an email and um, I'm happy to pray with you on the phone so we could arrange something and um, in the meantime hang in there encourage yourself in the Lord and know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord that we serve is a living God and he's a consuming fire he's the Alpha and he's the Omega and there is no one there is no being in heaven or on earth that is greater than him he is the great I am. He is the Lord of Lords and he's the King of Kings. And there is, oh Lord, I just, I love you and I praise you.
because you are amazing you are exalted above all in heaven and the earth and he will come through for you just as surely as he came through for the people that have been before us and the people that are going to come after us i love you in the lord and i thank you for listening and i hope you have a great week bye